Megan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. I am in kind of like corner life crisis mode. Okay. I um, spent my whole life working towards becoming a doctor. And last year I was in medical school and, well, that didn't work out. And so I was pretty devastated this last spring um, when that all fell through. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just had no idea what to do and where to go from there. And so in kind of like a, oh, crap, what do I do? I signed up to attend an accelerated nursing program, which I will be starting in January um, here where I'm living, but I am like dreading it. Um, and okay, so I, let's pause. Let's pause for just a moment. Yeah. I, I want to get all the yeah. details from you, but you've dropped several things we need to get clarity on. Yeah. Real quick, why did med school not work out? Well, I failed a course, and then I was like, they talked with my, I was talking with my advisors, and they're like, yeah, like. We just don't want to see you go through this and not succeed long term, like with further, like um. Because like you the, failed. The, the difference. Hold on. Well, Be- not one class. It was more than one class. So oh, okay. <laughs> I was struggling. Okay, so hold and, on. So this is important. Yeah. So you were struggling academically, and your advisor said, mm-hmm. "We don't think you need to go forward. This is not necessarily a good decision for you." That's what basically. And yeah, you were, they were they were trying to help me make a good decision and not waste my money and. Right. Stuff however, like that. however, then the other thing you said is that you were devastated. So it wasn't like you were relieved. Yeah. You were hurt. You were bummed because this oh. was. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Tell yeah. me why. Tell me why in your words. Um, I think it was because, like, since I was 15, I, like, had this whole, like, thing with God where I was like, hey, God, like, what do you want me to do with my life? Because, you know, I'm 15 and I'm supposed to have everything figured out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so I felt like I was having this call to, like, medical missions and all these things. And um, so then I just basically dedicated my life to, like, working towards that goal and it's not like I mean like I'm a decently intelligent person but I'm not a genius by any means and so going through college like I was you know A's and B's and I was like kind of like okay well like I'm not very competitive for medical school but you know I bet I could have a chance and I know I want this more than a lot of people right and so I ended up applying, and then lo and behold, I got accepted. Like, I wasn't expecting it at all. Like, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This has to be a God thing. Like, and it was just kind of like an affirmation. Well, let me ask way. you this. And, did you love it? Besides not getting the good grades, did you, were you still fired up before this meeting? I want to know where your emotional state was before the meeting with the advisors. I think it was more of like a, like, like, I've had a lot of time to think about it now, obviously, but at the time, it was more of like, a, no, this is, like, what I'm doing. Like, how dare you try to take this away from me? Like, So what has changed? So what has changed in the time you had to think about it? Yeah, so I still am interested in, like, medical things, but the thing is, like, I'm interested in so many different things that um, I kind of realized that through last year, I was, I was just miserable. (laughs) I was spending all this time, like every single waking moment, Mm -hmm. it seemed like anyway, just like nose in the books, like, and I mean, that's what you have to do when you're No, I get it, but hold on. Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want you to answer this question. I don't want you to overthink it. Okay. Okay. I, I don't want you, I don't want Megan's head. I want Megan's heart right now. Okay. If school, listen, if you didn't have to go to any more medical school classes, if you had not struggled with all yeah. of that stuff that you struggled with, because despite your struggles, Megan, you still were a little bit like, wait, why are you guys telling me I shouldn't do this? Now, after the fact, you said you were miserable. And maybe that's true on some level. Some of the core stuff was miserable, but the idea of helping people through medicine, I'm not sure that's gone anywhere. So here's my question, yeah. straight up. If I could just wave a magic wand and put you on the mission field or in a small community, or I don't know where it is, and you could just help people through medicine, would you want that? Would you say, yes, Ken, sign me up today? Ugh, give me no more classes. I just want to help people. 
What's the story? <laughs> What's the answer? I would say a hesitant yes. Why would you hesitate? <laughs> because I realized last year how consuming medicine is. Mm-hmm. And looking, if I could just, like you said, wave a wand and be in the career that I wanted to be in, like this time last year, then I would be scared that that would be my entire life. Oh, that, well, wait a second. Uh, now you're going into another conversation. Nobody said it'd be your entire uh, life. But at the age of 15, yeah. here's my point. I'm trying to uncover all the layers that have happened to you. You got a lot of yeah. layers on your head and heart right now. And you just, yeah. you started off the call saying you're in a quarter life crisis. Number one, you're not. I know, but it feels that I way. I know, I know. And I'm not belittling your feeling. What I'm telling you is, as yeah. your friend, this is not a crisis. Mm-hmm. You know what this is? This is a crossroads, not a crisis. Okay? So you, you've you okay. got to figure out where the paths are. Because you're standing at a crossroads. You know what a crossroads looks like, don't you? Yeah. Okay, just picture you standing there. If I could get out a piece of paper, I'm drawing I'm drawing that X, if you will, to symbolize crossroads. And I've got a stick figure, because I can't draw, that represents Megan. And that's where you stand. You have to decide which direction you're going to go. But I, I don't think that you can decide that direction until you get that confidence and clarity back that you had even just a year ago. As a 15-year-old, there was a clear call at least a, a, an urge, a leaning towards uh, medicine in a mission field type s- setting. Now, that's okay for that to change. 15-year-olds don't usually have yeah. it figured out. But yeah. I just don't see any evidence that you've truly lost your passion for helping people through some form of medicine. Now, does that mean nurse, doctor, uh, PA? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I think that had you doubled down and got some extra help, it's possible that you could have passed med school. Yes or no? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Would you have been the greatest student? Mm -hmm. No. But there's always a last person in a medical school graduating class. (laughs) I promise you, had I gone to medical school, it would have been me and I would have had to cheat my way through. And nobody wants the doctor who cheated. Okay. But you, on the other hand, I think you believe you could have gotten through it. And I think uh, you've got to listen to the heart response that when that advisor or advisor sat you down and they said to you, uh, we don't think you should do this. And your first reaction was, what? You're going to take this away from me? That's what you said. I don't think that's delusion. I think it's possible to not be the greatest med student, but be a great doctor. That's what I believe. Now, you're at the crossroads. So I think your exercise, here's your homework. Next couple of weeks, couple of days. And by the way, you can call me back. In fact, you get clarity on what I'm about to ask you to clear. I want you to call me back. You need to figure out, is it truly helping people that are dealing with medical struggles? Now, that just, just boil it down to that. Is that it? And if that is it, then there are multiple ways to do that. Nurse is just one way. Doctor is another way. You could be a foreign aid worker, you know, where you're doing basic. You could be an EMT. You know, you could could do a lot of things that would allow you to be around people and helping people that are struggling with some medical stuff. I think that is your core. But you have to ask yourself, is it really, truly helping people that are struggling with medical issues? Maybe that don't have. I mean, where does that 15-year-old come back into play? Is it a missions play? for you. I don't know. You know. And you got to figure it out. Who do you most want to help? What problem do you most want to solve? Why? Answer those questions. Who do you most want to help? What problem do you most want to solve? What solution do you want to provide? Why? Who do you most want to help? What problem do you most want to solve? What solution do you most want to provide? Why? Answer those questions. Call me back. Because you're at a crossroads. I think... That you're a diamond in the rough. I think you're probably not a great test taker. Maybe not the greatest classroom student. But at the end of the day, I've never asked any of my doctors what they got in med school. Not one time. You know, it just hit me, man. It just hit me. 
I've never said, hey, by the way, before we talk about this procedure, uh, can I get your transcripts emailed to me? I'll give you my email real quick. I'd like to scan them over real quick. Like to, and also, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to a couple of your professors. That's never happened. Food for thought.